Tune into Nice Radio every Saturday at 7:30 a.m. for A View from the Outside, hosted by Brayton Horn. A View from the Outside takes a look at key issues affecting St. Vincent and the Grenadines and gives a global perspective on how these issues are viewed. Host Brayton Horn will examine a variety of topics to enlighten, stimulate debate, and explore solutions. Hear the facts, hear the real-life stories, hear A View from the Outside. Join Brayton Horn at 7:30 a.m. every Saturday on Nice Radio for a view from the outside. This society need a spectacle. It might help us to see some evil. This society need a spectacle. On a, on a view from the outside this week. This week being the 14th of May, 2022. We look at causes. C a u s e s causes. And in view of the upsurge in violent crimes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we focus on whether the government in the country has been tough on the causes of crime, something which they promised to do in the lead up to them sweeping into power in 2001. The Cambridge Dictionary defines cause simply as the reason why something, especially something bad, happens. That simple definition tells us that when looking at the cause of something, especially something bad, as in the case of crime, one needs to look at the reason why it happens. So in applying that simple definition to our focus today, we, on a view from the outside, will endeavor to highlight whether the regime in St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been tough on the causes of crime, something which they promised to do more than two decades ago when they swept to power in the country. In 1997, the Labour Party in the United Kingdom, under the leadership of Tony Blair, swept to power after being in opposition for 18 years. Their slogan, which catapulted them into power, was tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. It is debatable whether the Tony Blair government, over its time in administration, satisfied the British people that it was indeed tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. Nearly four years later, in 2001, the Unity Labour Party in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, under the leadership of Ralph Gonzales, famously adopted the said slogan of the Tony Blair Labour Party in the United Kingdom. And they promised the Vincentian people that they will be tough on crime and the causes of crime. The recent upsurge in violent crimes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines has become a grave concern to many. And the question is asked throughout the country, the rest of the region and further field in the Vincentian diaspora, whether the Ralph Gonzales government, more than two decades later, has been tough on the causes of crime. It is with that in mind why we, on a view from the outside, have chosen to tackle this topic today. And we do so by highlighting some examples. Some of the causes of crime are poverty, drug and alcohol abuse, the lack of community facilities and activities, and unemployment. Most literature and organizations, including the United Nations, identify and rank poverty as one of the major causes of crime. Focusing on poverty, it is believed that the government in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, notwithstanding natural and external factors, over the last 20 years, deliberately created and nurtured poverty in the country. 
it is generally believed that this was done to create a dependency on the government so that the government's chances at election times are enhanced. With that in mind, therefore, and looking at the current state of the economy in the country, especially taking into consideration the hardship which Vincentians are experiencing on a daily basis, can it therefore be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? Can it be said that they're tough on the causes of crime when it is shown that they failed and continue to fail to tackle poverty in the country? Can it be said that they are tough on the causes of crime when they denied the very existence of poverty in the country? Can it be said that they are tough on the causes of crime when they refused and continue to refuse to release the report of the country poverty assessment. There is no denying now from the regime that not just poverty, but extreme poverty exists up and down the country. Because the head of the regime, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez himself, told the United Nations and the rest of the world that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in extreme poverty. Many cynics say that his reason for making such an admission after years of denial was to try to get more aid and donations from the international community. So, with extreme poverty, the very word of the head of the regime, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez himself, with extreme poverty continuing to plague Vincentians up and down the country. Can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? In relation to unemployment being one of the causes of crime, it is widely known that the unemployment rate in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is extremely high, with youth unemployment over 50%. Despite the high number of unemployment in the country. The situation exists where the regime itself is contributing to the unemployment figure by deliberately making people unemployed. One of the ways by which they have done so is with their draconian COVID-19 laws, which they used to sack hundreds of public servants, including teachers, police officers, customs officers, sanitation workers, and other public servants. With the regime itself being involved in the denial of jobs, with them being involved in sacking people from their jobs, and thus adding to the extreme poverty in the country, can it be said that they are tough on the causes of crime? Taking into account that drug use is escalating out of control and with the influx of cocaine into the country, can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? Where you have a situation where the country is awash with cocaine, can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? where you have a situation with St. Vincent and the Grenadines having some of the toughest border controls, it can be assumed that the ordinary Vincentian is not bringing in the cocaine. They may well be held in public to be responsible, but it can be said that they're not bringing it in. And in such circumstances, one has to question how cocaine in such large quantities get into the country. One has to question who is responsible for bringing in cocaine and who is responsible for its distribution across the country. In such circumstances, can it be said that the Ralph Gonzalez government has been tough on the causes of crime? Can the regime be said to be tough on the causes of crime when there is such glaring inefficiency 
in the administration of justice in the country. One such example is where Venezuelans involved in the death of a customs officer were allowed to leave the country without facing justice. Can they, the regime, be said to be tough on the causes of crime? And looking at the lack of community organizations and community activities up and down the country, when there's a situation where the regime is blamed for the abandonment and the disbanding of youth groups and community organizations throughout the country, including the National Youth Council, the NYC, can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? Here are some other examples of whether the regime has been tough on the causes of crime for you to consider. With the actual upsurge in violent crimes in the country, four murders in four days last week, and the gruesome discovery this week, of body parts of a young female found discarded like garbage in a crocker's bag. Can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? Where you have people disappearing in the country without a trace, including Mr. Jocelyn, the servant of the Lord of Cane Garden, and the young female Shanika Small, can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? In a case where there is the appearance that the leader of the country embeds himself in high profile cases in the country, can it be said that the regime is tough on the causes of crime? In this regard, consider the case involving the ULP senator and Deputy Speaker of the House, Ashel Morgan, when it was said that she was involved in a heinous crime against Cornelius John, when he was beaten and shot in his leg on his own private property. And in all of this, remember that the head of the regime said that Ashel Morgan called him after the incident. And he even went further to say that it was a case of a woman defending a woman. Some say giving justification to what allegedly happened. Consider also the various pronouncements made regarding the case involving Yogi Farrell, especially when the leader of the regime tried to give justification for the magistrate sending Yogi Farrell to the mental institution without having evidence of her mental capacity presented in court. Where you have the wife of a government minister refusing to give evidence against alleged criminals in a crime which involved her and her young son, can it be said that this regime is one which is tough on the causes of crime? Can a regime which is accused of being responsible for breaching the financial laws of the country by attempting to deposit one million US dollars in cash in the accountant general's account. Can that regime be said to be tough on the causes of crime? Where you have a situation where the ordinary person is aggrieved because he or she is dispensed a kind of justice that those who are well connected to the regime do not get. Can that regime be said to be tough on the causes of crime? Consider the case where Bigger Biggs was denied. In fact, his establishment was taken away from him and consider where he was beaten on his own land by supporters of the regime in the presence of a government minister. And to date, nothing has been done about it. Can it be said that that is a regime which is tough on crime and the causes of crime? Think about the unfairness in the treatment 
of the traditional marijuana or ganja farmers where they have been completely phased out and replaced and you determine for yourselves whether such policy contributes to the slogan of being tough on the causes of crime. There are many more examples that could be cited. However, with time against us, we leave you now to continue the discussion. And in doing so, the ball is in your court if you find the regime wanting, especially if you want better for you, your family, and the country. If you find that the regime has not been tough on the causes of crime as they promised to do over two decades ago, the ball is in your court, Vincentians. Until next week, Justin and all the listeners, this is Britton Horn with a view from the outside, with a reminder to send feedback as usual to a view from the outside at hotmail.com. We also invite you to visit and like our Facebook page at A View From The Outside. And also to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel at JMB Horn. Have a pleasant Saturday. All have a wonderful Sunday and have a productive week ahead.